recommendations that I have. Uh, it's been quite an eclectic mix for me in the last three, four months because I've genuinely tried to steer clear of writers and works that I usually would go in for and assimilate new information and it's been quite fruitful I would say. So if you love anthologies or essays uh, or observations, you might want to read J.D. Smith's book Intimations. Thin Petite book, um, her observations on the pandemic and you know life and in general. And this is the book which kind of propelled me to realize that the form of reading that I find very absorbing and restorative even is actually people and their unfiltered thoughts um, or ruminations or reflections, whatever you might call them. So I want to explore a Joanne Didier, you know, Susan Sontag, that's on my TBR list. I keep reading them and, um, you know, just um, uh, perusing through their quotes sometimes. Uh, also genuine plug-in for Mason Curry's book called Daily Rituals, Women at Work. It's for all the creative process warriors who want to know what happens in a creative artist's day I wanted to talk about this amazing writer that I've come across and I'm sure you're already a fan of hers but um, to those who are not acquainted with her I'm talking about Chimamanda Gozi Adichie and the book that I'm reading is called America and I hope I've said it right. Now this book I think is the perfect introduction to her brilliance and I'm sure you've heard of the other books written by her, Half of a Yellow Sun, Purple Hibiscus, We Should All Be Feminists because I just cannot stress on how captivating her prose is. She writes so well on really relevant topics and she's one of the most revered uh, contemporary writers that we have in recent times. Um, this book, uh, without laying stress on what the plot is, um, about a Nigerian woman in America and her gaze on gender, violence and everything. Um, it might seem like a very bulky kind of a text, but the way she handles and unfolds the story is it feels like you're learning a lot. It, and somebody has mentioned really rightly that it chronicles her everyday epiphanies. You know, the, whatever affects us in the most subliminal way. Everything is fucked by Mark Manson. Now it again has the F word in it, but uh, I love how Mark Manson has accorded a new status to the F word. It makes a lot more sense to me now somehow. And uh, while reading this book, I felt like he's one of my really evolved friends. Uh, who's dishing out some really cool advice to me and it's centered on a lot of practicality and realism. Like one of the first lines uh, that resonated with me was that happiness, uh, the opposite of happiness is not anger or sadness but it's actually hopelessness. And he kind of built on that and he invokes a lot of philosophers and scientists and he amalgamates his theories with their lives and times. So you might think that you know what is being said in the book is mundane but his presentation is really unique and refreshing. And uh, another line that I can recall at the top of my head is that pain is inevitable but suffering is a choice. So all this really makes me feel unburdened about life and it gives a fresh point of view to maybe tackle the same things and maneuver through the same problems again. So I really love this book. If essentially on the self but I'll uh, refrain from calling them self-help or self-improvement books. Um, I'd say that they'll give you good thoughts to just kind of chew on and uh, brood over. Like the first book is Stephen Covey's book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and I know a lot of you have already read this book and if you have these seven habits then you kind of exemplify perfection but uh, it's relevant today also it's one of the most enduring books and um, it's widely available so do read it if you haven't. The second is The Art of the Good Life. Now this is a lesser known book and it's a more practical book. It has like 52 or 54 mental tools on how to navigate through life and it's not based on very abstract, uh, you know, idealistic notions. It's more practical. It has some radical ideas as well. And it really worked for me. I keep going back to this book um, from time to time. The last is Flow by this American Hungarian psychologist called Mihaly. I won't attempt the name. Uh, but he equates life with being in a state of flow. And I know for some of you, this book may be a little dry. But I was reading The 40 Rules of Love recently and I genuinely feel like I'm one of the last person on this planet to get my hands on the book because so many of you mentioned that it's been one of the most compelling reads of your life. It has altered your consciousness to some degree and you actually want to reread it. Uh, I could have read the book earlier, but I think I was fortunate enough that it was kind of meant to be my companion in the most dismal self-isolation that I had to go through because um, it there is an inherent uh, lightness and kindness in the text which just radiates through and through. So by the time you finish reading the book, you actually want to dig deeper inside yourself, maybe spiritually or otherwise answer some hard questions because I felt that there are a lot of uh, philosophical queries which get addressed in the most serene kind of uh, tranquil and simple way so you're never overwhelmed and it's also the perfect introduction to Rumi to Sufism because I had read Rumi in the most scattered way possible you know some verses here and there and I knew that his work is deeply evocative and 
he's so renowned but i could never pursue it you know in the most detailed fashion but now i'm reading and frankly i've not read as much as i would have wanted to in the past couple of months but enough really to get inspired uh, the first book that i wanted to talk about is tools of titans now i know i mentioned it before but i still keep professing my love for it because i reach out for it a lot especially in the mornings the first thing when i uh, wake up and as you can see this book has been like brutally dog eared and uh, i keep reading the specific some specific stuff again and it's almost inscribed on my memory now so do give it a shot if you've not already and then i have a couple of murakamis what i talk about when i talk about running and men without women this is a fiction non fiction one and um, now i know why people have so much of affinity towards murakami because i think um, it's not that his writing is relatable i would say but the emotional core uh, really resonates with how we all perceive life and his description just gets it bang on then i have robin sharma's 5 am club now this could have been a condensed text so it meanders a lot it was here and there hither and thither a lot and it lost me in january i did finish reading an amazing book but i didn't particularly recommend it because i thought uh, it will be pretty much a redundant exercise you know everybody can vouch for its greatness uh, but i do think i have devised a strategy to tackle a book which is of this size now these are 700 odd pages and uh, the book is an old copy so it's in shambles i'm talking about the fountain head by ayn rand uh the thing that you've got to do with the book of this size is uh, keep aside like 30 to 50 pages in a day that you've got to read don't switch it with any other book uh, and uh, make it a seamless read don't make it like a herculean task that you have to kind of sum out and this book it's the perfect blend of fiction and philosophy and uh, it will make you ask a lot of questions the protagonist of this book uh, howard roark i hope i'm getting the name right he is one of the most enigmatic personalities that you'll ever read through words and through pages you know you can actually feel the vibe of that person and i'm comp- सो so गाइज़ आपने देखा जो धैर्या यानी नमिता दुबे वो बुक के बारे में बता रही है और अगर आपने एक्सपीरियंस नहीं देखा तो आप जा करके जो फोर्थ एपिसोड अभी रिलीज़ हो चुका है आज एक बजे उसको टी के यूट्यूब चैनल के ऊपर रिलीज़ कर दिया गया है अगर आपने फोर्थ एपिसोड को नहीं देखा तो आप जा कर ज़रूर देखिए और अगर आपको फिफ्थ एपिसोड का इंतज़ार है जो कि मुझे बहुत बेसब्री से इंतज़ार है क्योंकि मुझे बेस बहुत अच्छा लगा है ये जो शो है इनका जो वेब सीरीज़ है बहुत ही अच्छी लगी अगर आपको फिफ्थ एपिसोड देख ना है तो उनके 10 मिलियन सब्सक्राइबर कंप्लीट करने होंगे और जो कि बहुत बड़ा टास्क है और देखना होगा कि कब जो टीवीएफ है उनका जो फिफ्थ एपिसोड यानी एक्सपीरियंस का फिफ्थ एपिसोड वो रिलीज करने वाले हैं और अगर आपको ये वीडियो अच्छी लगी तो वीडियो को लाइक कर दीजिए और चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर लीजिए क्योंकि हम ऐसे लेटेस्ट इंफॉर्मेशन इस चैनल पर लाते रहते हैं सो हे गाइज थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग एंड गॉड ब्लेस यू ऑल स्टे होम स्टे सेफ एंड डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेलाइकन फॉर मोर अपकमिंग अपडेट्स एंड थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो गाइज